Hello and welcome to Matrix Live. I'm currently in Elements French offices and my guest today is Gaël. Gaël is part of the SRE team at Element and he's been working on ESS Community Edition. He's going to walk us through what ESS is, who the Community Edition is for, and he's going to demo the project at the end. Okay, Gaël, hello and welcome to Matrix Live. Uh, today you're going to talk to us about ESS Community Edition and I have plenty of questions for you. Uh, can you start by telling us what is ESS? ESS uh, stands for Element Server Suite. Um, it's our server product. This is what we offer to Element customers for hosting uh, all our server systems. And um, yeah, so ESS Community is what uh, we are going to release soon, and it's basically our server products, but really targeted for self-hosters and small deployments for the community to be able to profit from our la latest technologies in Matrix. All right, so when I look at Matrix and what Element already develops, um, I can see there is the Element client, I can see there is Synapse, uh, the server, I can see plenty of, of other products Element is working on, and I also see uh, a community project called Matrix Ansible Deploy. Um, it's a very comprehensive project. Is ESS trying to compete with it? Um, not really, but um, while uh, so this Ansible project is trying to basically be able to deploy anything Matrix, we focus really on uh, our own product. So uh, the idea is to have a very uh, simplified deployment for everything that we developed recently for Synapse, Matrix Authentication Service. Uh, Element Call will come in the future as well. And uh, yeah, we are not going to compete with uh, this very good project, but we are trying to uh, build something that is easily deployable for the community, um, which has 99% of the features that one would need to use Element Clients. All right, so w when I look at uh, the Ansible Deploy project, it's already quite easy to deploy things. I guess uh, when I look at ESS, there are less products uh, built into the package. I guess one of the points is also to be able to sell support to community members who would want to upgrade to uh, get support from Element. Yes, so we have uh, ESS Pro uh, for actual customers, for people who want to do uh, bigger deployments. Uh, also, it provides a lot of uh, features like uh, identity management, uh, permissions, uh, a, lot, a lot more uh, scalability uh, features, etc. Uh, etc. Et so the pro, the pro deployment is really focused on um, people who need uh, a very good architecture and infrastructure to, de to deploy metrics and metric services. Um, yeah, it will be very easy to move from community to pro. Basically, it's uh, just changing one one line or two line on just upgrade, um, and it will be the same mechanism. So the idea is also it's very to, it should be very easy to try out uh, our server suite and see how it goes. And if people think yeah, this is what I need for my company or my group of people. So you're talking about ease of deployment, and when I look at the project, I see Kubernetes, and it doesn't sound very easy to me. But before we move on to that, um, I have a question about um, how it relates to the Ansible Deploy project, because one of the strengths of the Matrix Ansible Deploy project is how comprehensive it is. Um, it supports installing virtually every popular Matrix project. As soon as a, po a project gets traction in the community, you can see it's added to, to the Matrix Ansible playbook. Um, can I install as many things with ESS or is it completely locked down? Can I install other services that Element don't support? Uh, so uh, in ESS, we focused on deploying uh, the service that we built, but uh, it's possible like uh, as any other deployment to plug in external services. So there is uh, the, the app service mechanism in Synapse, for example, where you can plug in bridges and stuff like that. Uh, so it's not locked down at all. Uh, but if you want to deploy additional services, you will have to probably maybe use the Matrix Ansible deploy to deploy them and plug them against ESS or do it yourself. 
But uh, yeah, the idea is uh, to have really something very focused on not trying to do everything. Okay, so the main selling point of ESS is to have a sort of, of core that is supported yeah. by Element and that you can upgrade um, to Element to get proper support for that, like PED support. Um, and then you are not locked in a walled garden. You can still add all the app services, bots, etc., that you yeah. need for uh, for your own needs. Um, all right. So getting back to the deployment, um, I mentioned Kubernetes earlier because this is what I saw in, in the README. And disclaimer: I am a Hope Labber, but uh, I find Kubernetes to be completely overblown for me because I have a single <laughs> VPS. So I'm quite. Uh, maybe scared uh, about Kubernetes. Do I need to be an expert uh, to deploy ESS? Yeah, so uh, completely, I can say really, no. It's very easy to deploy. Actually, uh, our first like tester of the ESS community was our product manager. So he's not really a technical guy, and he was able to deploy it in a couple of minutes. I think Kubernetes has this reputation to be something really technical because when you usually see it in very large deployments, but nowadays there are a lot of uh, Kubernetes uh, providers, which are basically a daemon that you run on your server or your laptop. And you have the same features that uh, you would use, for example, with Docker Compose. But with uh, all the progress that have happened in Kubernetes with these last years, now it's very easy to just have a, a small YAML file, a couple of values. Uh, we, we use Helm charts for ESS, so People used to Kubernetes will know what it is, but it's basically a YAML file. You write uh, the domain names of your deployments and you press deploy and that's it. So yeah, it's very quick. And um, yeah, from, uh, from my own experience, for example, with Docker Compose and stuff like that, you, you have to use specialized uh, uh, reverse proxies to handle certificates, uh, let's encrypt, etc. So it's always a bit uh, messy and you have to figure out how to do stuff every time and with kubernetes there are a lot of things which are natively integrated because there are products to do that yeah my experience of docker compose is basically that it's very easy to spin up a service but it's much more difficult to maintain it in the long run like things tend to degrade or it's difficult to upgrade etc um, so i can see the point of uh, of using a, a kubernetes cluster um, I am a home labber myself. I have a home lab. I have a few other services. One of my main worries is um, I use Trafic as a, as a reverse proxy because it, it has a lot of uh, auto magic. I can deploy new services, uh, add new containers, add the proper tag, and then it's going to retrieve certificates automatically for me. Um, can I install ESS or does ESS need to have control of everything on my server? So um, in the README, we explain how to set up a very simple Kubernetes cluster to set up ESS. So it's based on K3S, uh, which is a single node uh, Kubernetes cluster. And uh, we explain how to configure it behind an existing reverse proxy. Uh, so the default behavior in Kubernetes is to use the port uh, 443, but you can configure it. And uh, yeah, so the idea is if you have already a reverse proxy, uh, just reconfigure K3S to use another port that you have available locally. And it will be, you just have them to yeah, just proxy pass to, to the Kubernetes cluster for this domain name. So yeah, I mean, our product manager actually had to do this itself, himself and he managed to do it easily, so. <laughs> it's quite technical for a non-technical person. <laughs> um, uh, but so if I'm not entirely convinced, how would you convince me to install ESS instead of, instead of just installing Synapse via Docker Compose? Um, I mean, uh, you sh so you should try it out uh, because really I think in a couple of minutes you will have your, your setup with Mass, uh, Synapse, uh, Element Web, your well-known delegation, everything properly set up with the best practices. Um, and uh, yeah, even I personally am going to move to this system once it's out for my own self-hosting uh, server. So yeah, and uh, the good things maybe, something that might convince you is that upgrades are a couple of minutes, nothing more uh, compared to other systems where you have to either manually do change or wait for a lot of scripts to handle all the things that have to change. So yeah. You mentioned MAS, uh, sometimes also known as MAS. Uh, can you remind us briefly what MAS is? 
Yeah, so Matrix Authentication Service, uh, so MAS, or MAS. Um, it's uh, the future of authentication in Matrix world based on OIDC. And uh, the community has had a lot of complaints about how complex it is to set up. And it's probably uh, uh, a bit of truth in that because it's another component. Uh, users are not managed in Synapse anymore, but in another component that you have to set up. So at first it can be intimidating. And I think setting it up with VSS feels like, okay, it's actually very trivial. Um, uh, you don't think about it, really. All right, I can see the appeal of having several components uh, working together on a Kubernetes cluster. Um, because indeed, it's not exciting to have a yet another container uh, for your yeah, deployment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there used to be the uh, the sliding sync proxy. Fortunately, it's been decommissioned, and now yeah. it's part of, of, of Synapse. But uh, this is yet another container. So having something uh, with seed belts included uh, that you can just simply deploy on your server makes sense. Um, you mentioned that you are going to migrate your, your own deployment as an individual uh, to ESS community. Um, is there an upgrade path? Can I migrate my existing Synapse data in ESS or do I need to start from scratch? Um, so it's actually quite simple if you have a basic deployment like me. Uh, you have probably already an existing database, so you can plug ESS against this database. And you probably already have a folder with your Synapse uh, matrix medias, and you just have to reuse this folder. Um, yeah, that's it. So yeah, I think deployment should be quite straightforward. <laughs> All right, uh, and let's say I successfully uh, installed ESS for my company or for my organization, and uh, it's widely successful, and I end up needing support. Uh, where should I go? Okay, so we are going to uh, create a new room for the community to basically. Uh, at first, it's mostly for feedback. So if people have some things to to suggest or some things to, uh, if they have ideas or stuff like that, they can come to this room to talk to us. In, uh, with regards to support, uh, we are probably doing it a little bit, but best effort because obviously we are quite busy. Um, yeah, um, if you take, uh, if you become a customer, you will have access to the Pro Edition and you will have official support and everything will come with it. But uh, yeah, for community users, it will be up to the community to support you, and um, yeah, we can. We might answer answer you sometime when we have time, but obviously, yeah. All right, and by going to that uh, matrix room, I can be put in touch with uh, somebody from sales if I want to be upgraded to paid support. Probably yes, I think so. <laughs> I think sales sales people should probably join the room. <laughs> All right, is there anything else the world needs to know about ESS? I mean, uh, I think it's a very good thing for Element to finally have a good uh, server system to offer to the community. Um, yeah, you, you you should try it out. Um, I mean, as an ops uh, engineer myself, I think maybe you will have a nice taste of Kubernetes, and you might even want to try more stuff later with it. So yeah, it's a good, it's good, and it, it's fun. All right. Thank you very much, Gail, and Thank I'll you. see you next time. See you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, so a quick demo to show you how quick and easy it is to set up Element Server Suite Community Edition. Uh, so here I'm at the step where my KFUS cluster is already prepared. I have uh, the following value files. And uh, in these value files, you will find my host names. On the let's encrypt settings to yeah to basically say to the Kubernetes setup to rely on let's encrypt for the certificates. So here these are the host names of my deployments. With uh, you can see on the top the server name, which will be uh, the server name part of my users MXIDs, and I also have uh, the following value in the let's encrypt file. Uh, I have to create my namespace first. So a Kubernetes namespace is uh, basically something to place your container and they will share the same network. Once you, do, you have done that, uh, you will be able to uh, run the setup command. Uh, so the setup command looks like this. 
uh, you create you run the upgrade install in the namespace ESS and you target the values file that you need. Here I'm using host names on let's encrypt and I'm saying it to wait until the setup uh, went through. In kinds if I open the ESS namespace I can see uh, some things happening. So there is a first step where it will initialize secret, then it will run a check config hook to make sure that if you ever change your signups config, you are not going to break it. This is to prevent any downtime if you ever change uh, your signups configuration with uh, your values. Once it's done, uh, the containers are bootstrapping. Here you can see uh, Postgres starting, Elementred is already ready. Uh, Synapse will begin to run together with Matrix Authentication Service in a couple of seconds. And yep, that's it, this setup is ready. Once you are there, you will be able to open your browser and go to your server name address. It will redirect you automatically to the element client. You will arrive here, you can click on continue. And MAS, so Matrix Authentication Service, will ask you to log in. Here, I don't have a user yet. So I'm going to create a user and uh, the command is in the is in the readme. Basically, you have to call mass CLI manage register user against the matrix authentication service container. Uh, so I'm going to create a username. Uh, I will call my user Alice. Uh, I have to set a password. So I'm configuring a secure password. And once it's done, um, I just have to click create the user. Confirm, my user is ready. I can open my browser. And that's it. Alice is connected. And I can create new rooms if I want. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to go. Um, use this my server for my family, for my community, and use it to talk to the whole Matrix Federation. So hopefully you find it very easy and you will have a lot of fun playing with it. So let us know what you think about it. Thank you for watching.